It's long been said Guardiola's dream was to have a team full of midfielders. An entire 11 with the ability of midfielders. Yeah, that's true. However, today we take it to the extreme and create Pep's nightmare. That's right, so we are with Man City today. And this is the template we find ourselves in. This is a request that I've had several times of playing just midfielders, so no defence and no strikers. And that's the only place we can put players. The hard part now is trying to work out what roles will give us any sort of chance of not getting sacked after five matches. So place your bets now, how long do we last? We know in this game that November seems to be key sacking time. If we can somehow get to January, it's a great, great achievement. Okay, what the hell do we do here? I know what's funny. If we press quick pick, this is the team it throws at me. So it's saying Walker, Cancelo, Ake, Rodri, Stones. That isn't that bad. And then Grealish, Nunes, Foden, De Bruyne, Silva. You'll notice a glaring omission is big Erling. But in my team, Erling's going to be a central midfielder. <laughs> what are you doing? So we're going to retrain Erling and make him forget everything he's learned about being a striker. My thoughts for this is going to be very simple. I'm going to have everyone on attack in midfield and everybody in defensive midfield you've guessed it will be on defend now the free rolls here might give us a chance let's have the two guys that know how to play center back half backs or do we do all three let's just do two for now and see how it goes edison you've got to be a sweeper keeper on attack i want him to play basically as my center back team instructions our only hope is to keep the ball as long as possible so let's Drag that back there. Play out of defence. There is no defence. Uh, work ball into box. Why not? Underlap. Yeah, I think we're going to run at defence because we might have to when we've got the ball. This is the nightmare. Let's have a look what counter press looks. <laughs> if we press counter press, everybody's going to run around like maniacs. So let's drop that. What about counter? Okay, we'll counter because then the three guys at central midfield, central defensive midfield, will sit there. This is where it looks blooming ridiculous. This is a mid block, so that's our defensive midfield and that's our attacking midfield. Oh my god, that's our much higher line, which means over that halfway line. So let's let's go standard and oh my god, this is so hard. We're gonna try and not trigger a press. We definitely don't want to do that because they'll be out of position. Stay on feet, drop off more. So that's the team. Our first batch of fixtures hopefully are quite kind. Man United Wolves, Everton Chelsea, Arsenal, Pat it could be worse. Seems a long way till November though. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. So how did preseason go, I hear you ask? A casual 6-6 draw against Marseille. A 4-4 draw against Huddersfield. Now in this match against Girona, it's new superstar midfielder Erling Haaland scored. Can you believe we won that match 4-2, but we do own Girona, so that might have something to do with it. Of course, yes. Because in the next match, we lost 6-1 to AZ Alkmaar. Ah, oh, shit. So, in our pre-season, we managed to concede, let me total this up, 29 goals in six matches. As we went into the Community Shield, I was obviously a bit worried because of the Alkmaar game. However, Manchester United had absolutely no idea what to do with this. Time after time, we cut through them, especially on the counter-attack. Grealish here leaves them in his dust. And by the end of the match, look at this build-up play and the midfield runners. We'd smashed Manchester United 5-1 using that. I was intrigued by the average positions on the pitch, so with the ball against Manchester United, we looked a little bit like that. It looks like a solid 4-1, 4-1, right? Without the ball, you can see the problems where the central midfielders stay higher than the wing backs for an overall position of that so pre-season was done and what i'm about to show you completely blew my mind i guarantee you've never seen this before in football manager are you ready yeah! look at that it's like a spaghetti bolognese of chemistry what have we created? As amazing as that looks, I was still a bit worried about the wingbacks playing everybody on side because they get a little bit deeper than everyone else. So Wolves came to town for our first Premier League game of the season and the midfield runners completely bamboozled them as we raced into a 3-0 lead. However, they seemed to work it out. When we lose the ball, they realised there's absolutely nobody in defence so they just started hoofing it over the top and that caused us to concede four goals. However, we led 5-1 at half-time 
And that was enough to get our first win of the season in our first match. And by the way, 79% possession. The next game was a tricky looking one away to Everton and to my utter amazement we just continued to bamboozle the opposition. And the heat map looks exactly like you think it would. However, it was Chelsea in the next match and this guy had an absolute field day. As you can see, he just pounces through the middle time after time in this one. All his goals were pretty similar, that big ball over the top and the finish. He scored all five as we lost to Chelsea 4-5. <laughs> now our first big defeat came away at Arsenal. The same ball, the same goal. We need to fix this. Right, in honesty, the first four matches have gone way better than I thought they could have. The only problem we've got is that ball over the top that's killing us. What do we do with it? What do I do? The options are to press higher these lot, so crank the press up to try and stop the defenders, like man mark them with these lots and maybe push them up, or change the roles back here. If we go back to the Chelsea match and Lukaku there, who's marking him? So Rodri's there, he's the defensive midfielder, so he's out the equation. Ake's a halfback. Stones is a halfback, so they're all kind of missing them. So we can bring in man marking in our next match to make Stones and Ake mark the centre backs. I think that centre forwards, I think that's what we'll try. So from now, we'll go to the halfback and we'll add in mark specific player. It looks like they're going to be playing one striker, Odson Edward. We're going to have him and Ake both marking him. Hopefully, one of them can get the job done. We were ready to put our new master plan into action. Against Palace, Odson Edward scored a double hat trick. Embarrassing. Just gonna remove that from there. We then conceded seven to Stuttgart, five to West Ham, and six against Liverpool. I mean, Edison tried his best. With the pressure increasing, I dropped the defensive line back and I increased the trigger press. Why not? Against Newcastle, it paid off as we got back on the winning trail thanks to central midfield superstar Erling Haaland. 6-5. After seven matches, we were sat in mid-table, having scored 22 times but conceded 32. And date check, we have made it to October. With it looking like the wing-backs were playing everyone on side, I decided to push them forward so we wouldn't have that problem and try and catch teams offside. And that proved to be an absolutely disastrous decision as Ivan Tony went mental. And we got beat 10-0. Let's just put that back to where it was. It's a disgrace. That's what it is, a disgrace. Despite that result, the board was still satisfied with my management of the team. Are you sure, lads? We tightened up in the next match, only conceding five to Leicester, but now the pressure's starting to mount at the 21st of October. As expected, this is where the goals have came from. Long balls, 25, through balls, 29. In a last ditch attempt, I'm gonna ask all my central midfielders to trigger the press more often. I also slapped in a couple of defensive wingers to try and put pressure on fullbacks. I'm also gonna ask my central midfielders to mark the opposition centre-backs. I've done all I can, there's nothing more I can do. If you think you can do better, what would you have done? Honestly, what would you have done? At this point, check out this poll I put on. Look, only 34 minutes ago, so early days in it. October or before is 16%. That's the least amount. You people have got too much faith in me to predict this. 29% of you are maniacs. Far too much faith in me. And the big news is we've made it to the 3rd of November. But we did just lose 8-2 to Brighton with Danny Welbeck scoring a double hat-trick. <laughs> <laughs> then against newly promoted Ipswich, we found our groove again for a little while and then that happened eight times not surprisingly the players were starting to kick off but we'd managed to stay in the job longer than eddie howe and eric ten Hag both got sacked in october but there was no time to get cocky as we fell into the relegation zone and i got sacked too you're joking not another one so we made it all the way to the 7th of november i mean we called it didn't we but despite that absolute torture, and it was torture, nobody can take that away from me. I've never seen that in Football Manager, and I probably won't ever see it again. If you feel like you can last past me, let me know in the comments how the hell you did it. So, I have been challenged to create something I've never even thought about. What is it? Well, it's a tactic with three of these. Halfbacks on defend. I thought we were over this. Are you having a laugh? Three halfbacks. So folks, I won't lie to you, I've got absolutely no idea how to approach this. 
No idea. I mean, first things first, let's just slot them in there so we can see what it looks like. So three halfbacks. I've used two before, but I've never even thought about using three. I guess to point out how ridiculous this is, is to point out what a halfback does. So when the team are attacking, so say you're progressing with the ball down one side or whatever, your halfbacks are going to drop back in. So we're basically asking three players to all drop back in. And then there's no room for them. Even the game won't let me do it. There's just no room. There's going to be so many players back and nobody forward. We're going to use Ajax because I've got a save file ready for them. So I apologize, Ajax fans. I also apologize if you can hear the fan and the door and the window. Everything's open because the UK can't deal with heat. Fact. So how are we going to go about this? My initial thoughts are that we definitely need wing backs on attack because otherwise everyone's going to be back there. So let's get them up there like that. So what we're going to have to think about is that there's going to be kind of nobody here because all these guys are convinced they need to drop back. So we've got a couple of options. We can either bring in a libero to surge past them like that, like we did in our libero experiment. Or we can simply get rid of a defender, move him up, and then we've got one back and then maybe all three of these lot will jump back. Now, as stupid as that sounds, we are Ajax, so it might actually work. So the first thing I'm going to try is this. Wingbacks both sides, Libero, three halfbacks. My thoughts are Libero will swap places with at least two of the halfbacks. I'm not sure what the third one's going to do. And then we're going to have an extra player here to get up the pitch. So I've loaded in the Roma's tactic, right? And we're going to work off that as a template. After a little bit of adjusting, it looks like this. My thoughts are in match, wingbacks will push up there, libero will push up, halfbacks will drop back, forward stays as normal. That's the theory. Should we see? So it looks like my man Satala will be our designated libero, right? Good on the ball. Let's see how he does. Friendly first. So the opposition have got a free kick, right? There's our libero. There's our free halfbacks. We're going to see what happens here if we can win the ball back. When we don't have the ball, that's when there's obviously a problem. Here it goes. Mansvirk's dropped deep. We like that. The other two, not so much. And now we've got the ball. Satalo, like we thought, is off. This will work if two out of the three stay back. And they are. Mansvirk and Tahirovic are staying back. So randomly, Taylor has decided to ignore his role and duty and just bomb forward. Keep it going. Yeah, he's bombing forward. But now he's put the brakes on. And he's going kind of back. He swapped places with Mansberg. I actually quite like that. There's a bit of rotation going on. And the fullback cuts across. Libero's on the edge of the box. Halfbacks are spread across there. Bang. Aye, aye. He even scored again. But it was from the corner, so that doesn't really count. And we lost. But here's a turn up for the books, folks. We just beat Porto in a preseason friendly 4-1. Battered him, it seems. Let's have a little look. So, Sotalo Libero going for it. In at halfback, we've got Hato. Not Bergwijn. Hato, Boss, and Mansverk. They're the three. Let's see if it works again. Last time we got rotations. Two went back, one went forward. It actually turned out weirdly quite nicely. So we've won the ball back. Off goes to Taylor there. We've got Hato and Voss sitting back. Mansverk's going forward when it's on his side. Interesting. Now he's sitting back. All three are back. All three are back. So that formation looks like a three... 3-4, we invented something there. What? This is really good, look at the halfbacks. They are sitting back. That libero jumping in front of them is actually working here. Now, when the ball's down one side of the halfback, it looks like that halfback ventures forward a bit. I don't think he's gonna go much past this referee here. Let's have a look. It kind of puts the brakes on there, but your libero then turns into the midfielder. The two halfbacks are back. This might work. Can you see how enthusiastic I am? Especially when you beat a good team like Porto 4-1. Anyway, back to the tactic. We're going to give this a run for a chunk of the season. Let's see what happens. And remember, if you think you can do better, let me know how you did it in the comments. I'm also going to include a Google Sheets link, either in this video or the next. And it's going to be a direct link for you to feed me ideas because you feed me so many, I sometimes can't get through them. If they're on a sheet, I'll be able to see them. Anyway, should we put the team in? Popping the team in, it gave me that. A best 11 of Mansberg, Taylor and Henderson as our triple halfbacks. And we know our main man is going to be Libero. Let's see how they do. So into the league we go and it's clear where problems will exist. You can see our 
Centre back is just chilling up there. There's our three half backs. When we lose the ball here, the problem comes into view. He gets the ball and then the half backs have forgot to stay back. And the striker's eyes light up. And the brilliantly named Dudeman slams it home. However, despite that, the sheer amount of players that we have in forward areas all roaming around means we're hard to deal with. League match ended 6 2. Now I know what you're thinking, wait till you play Feyenoord, but check this out. Here's our three halfbacks in a row. Libero with the license to roam forward. The halfbacks staying back, feed the Libero. He is a little ping to the forward players. And we rip Feyenoord in half. Now that's going to be our toughest match, and we just battered them 3-0. So the first half of the season is done. Some big wins in there. We're currently sat in third position. Now with that tactic, I don't think that's bad. We've also finished top of the uh, Conference League group. So yeah, this is working all right. We've got a game in hand. We win that with one point off the top. I did not expect it to work as well as it does, but what seems to happen is when he goes forward, say these forward on this side, the ball goes forward this side, then this guy will back that attack up with these two sat back. It's fine. Unless you lose the ball, then you're in a bit of trouble. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Now this ridiculous triple halfback team somehow made the Dutch Cup final. Party Poopers PSV stopped us winning it though. We also made it to the quarterfinals of the Europa League. But Besiktas stopped us just. Boo. What seems to have happened here is after our great start to the season, perhaps, perhaps Mr. AI has started to work us out late on. Look at that bad run. This is interesting. Your average positions with the ball looks pretty normal, right? However, 16 is not your centre back. 37 is your centre back, so that's where he spends most of the time. And you can see the three half backs across there. How about without the ball? And 37 gets himself back. So you can see what it looks like with the ball and without. So there's the problems. When you lose the ball, 37's got to get himself back here. So despite a good end to the season, we ended up finishing third in Edit Divisi. Not a disgrace by any means. And really interestingly, average possession, we were second with 64%. That went way better than I thought it was. I changed these fullback positions for the last few matches. Seems to work quite well. I'm intrigued. I reckon there's something to work with there. Especially when you consider the 3 3 4 3 DM AM wide, rolls off the tongue tactic, created an average of plus eight clear cut chances. And if you want to make this tactic a bit better, try this screen here. It appears that 17 assists came from crosses and 20 from through balls. No surprise when there's nobody in defence. Three halfbacks. Who would have fought it? Time to go! Today we're going to take a normal tactic and flip it on its head. That's right, today the strikers will be on defend. And as many defenders as possible will be on attack. This is football heritage. Knowing I'm going to need three centre-backs, I've chose Inter Milan. They're set up perfectly for it. And it's time to get going with it. So each wide centre-back will be on attack. It'd be very easy to have wing-backs on attack up there, but let's make it a bit harder by dragging them back into the defensive zone. Both of them will also be on attack. That'll leave us one player who can just hold down the fort. As we move up front, we've already got one set up and a pressing forward on defend, and we'll match that with the other striker. So we have double pressing forwards on defend. Where the goals are going to come from, I have no idea. So this is tricky. We're going to have to find goals from somewhere. So I'm thinking that the central midfielders will both be on attack. We'll pop this guy up there for now as well. Meaning that these two will be the main threats. I'm expecting that when it gets going, your wing backs and your wide centre backs will be bombing up. So maybe your wing backs will end up there in a dream world and your wide centre backs will end up there. Your attacking midfielders might swap places so to speak, with the strikers. Um, who knows what's going to happen? Let's find out. And the good news is, this is the reason we chose Inter, because they've got masses of centre-backs and loads of midfielders and some decent striking talent as well. Oh yeah, better change this. One five four zero wide. I don't want to give you lot ideas for a new video, so let's hide that. So I've went away and had a little tactic build. Welcome to Def Tack. Defence and attack. Absolute rubbish. So what we've got going on here is two wide centre-backs on attack, two wing-backs on attack, so I'm hoping that those two players will dominate each flank. Higher up we have the two players on defend as strikers and hoping these two central midfielders will kind of switch places with them as we get going. We'll soon find out. And I've gone aggressive down here 
with an attacking mentality just to try and get players up the pitch because these guys are going to want to come back all the time. In fact, if you look at the pressing forward on defend, you can see his mentality is cautious. The hard-coded player instructions are all pretty basic and negative. So we're going to have to try and get goals from the central midfielders and possibly even from the wing-backs. Possibly even from the wing-backs. I put overlap on left and right, so the wing-backs and wide centre-backs can kind of rotate around. We'll see how it looks in match. It could be quite cool. So a big squad with load of options. For example, Carlos Augusto, who can play wing-back or centre-back, is pretty much ideal for a wide centre-back because he's got the ability to play wide, but can also do a job in the centre. Crossing, dribbling, very, very good option. And on the other side, we've got Pavard, who played for years as a right-back at Bayern Munich. He's pretty much the ideal wide centre-back as well. It'll be interesting to see how it affects the strikers. How many goals will they actually score, or will most of the goals come from these guys in midfield? Let's take you to a pre-season friendly against Juventus. Now, we've got the ball there from a set-piece, so that is our traditional setup. We've got wide centre-back Bisek is playing here with Bastoni and Barella's dropping deep to receive the ball. And our wing-backs is DeMarco and Dumfries. Up front, you can see we've got Lautaro there, Taram there, and the central midfielders are already trying to swap places with them. Let's see how it plays out then. So as Bisek drives forward, high up on the other side, we've got Dumfries, our wing-back, and DeMarco, our left wing-back. And this is what we thought would happen. Look, Lautaro and Turam have dropped back, and Hakan and Fratesi have swapped places with them. That is actually super cool. That might actually confuse a few centre-backs who thought they'd be marking these two, but they've completely switched. As the ball goes out wide, then the strikers start to get forward as well, meaning we've got four in the box alongside DiMarco. Our wide centre-backs now are acting as full-backs. Dumfries crosses, little deflection, and it's a striker that scores it, but look how many players we've got in the box. Heritage. In fact, pre-season was pretty good. Only one game that we didn't win against Fiorentina. So that was a promising start. I absolutely love the way the strikers dropped deep and the central midfields on attack went past them. And even though these two are deep, starting deep, they still get way high. Normally... These sorts of saves are pain, but I'm actually looking forward to this one. As the season got going, we had a really interesting game against Roma. Check this out. So that's a central midfielder on attack. And now out wide, we've got Dumfries there. But also joining him is the wide centre-back in Pavard. Dumfries and Pavard, look at them, basically next to each other. And it's fact Pavard who's now the most advanced. So Dumfries drops back to cover him. And he's the one that supplies the cross for the central midfielder to score. And in this same match, we got more of the rotations we were talking about. Bastoni there to Medi, who's dropped in as a pressing forward on defend. And about to burst past him is Mkhitaryan, central midfielder on attack. <laughs> Having seen those rotations, it was no surprise to see that we started the season really well. Look at them results flying in. Really annoying we lost the Milan derby, but I'm putting it down to that moment of madness from Hakan. Silly boy. Things are going well, and we even beat Aston Villa. What? Now you might ask, why is that such a big deal? Well, in this edition of Football Manager, it doesn't matter what I do, Aston Villa beat me. But not today, because they couldn't handle it as Acherby, the wide centre-back, found an out of it. Oh! So at the halfway point of the season, roughly, we are third in the league, and quite surprisingly, we're second top scorers with 38, we've only conceded 14. And we finished top of our Champions League group, not losing a match. However, I'm getting itchy fingers because we'd started well, but then you know how you get that little slump always around December, January time? I mean, it's not bad, but I just think there's signs we might need to change it up. So I'm going to try a couple of things. This result here against Napoli has tipped me. I just feel like we should be doing slightly better. If you look at chances created, we're top of that by an absolute mile. Shots four, we've had more than anybody, and clean sheets with joint top. I feel like we should be top of the league. And yeah, when I looked at the XG table, we should be. Interesting! One. So I made some slight changes to the tactic. The main one being, let's have a third central midfielder on attack to completely bomb forward past these two pressing forwards and try and get a few more goals that I think that we deserve. And now when we go forward with the three central midfielders on attack and those two wide players on attack, Acherby, DiMarco, look at how many options DiMarco's going to have here in the box. One, two, three, four, five, six, and the wide centre-back chilling on the edge of the box. It's no surprise that carnage happens in the box and we end up scoring. So this more aggressive version looks like it's got potential. And we won the Super Cup, beating top of the league Napoli. We battered Genoa. And this match against Fiorentina shows where we can get the goals and assist options from. That's Bastoni, our wide centre-back. He cuts it back to our centre midfielder on attack. And on the edge of the box is our wing-back. Heritage. We'd even made it to the semi-finals of the Champions League, believe it or not. And Liverpool 
couldn't deal with us at home. But I've just got the feeling that late goal from Gakpo might cost us. We lost the way to Milan 3-0. The scoreline flatters them, but this will show you the type of goal that we're conceding. And it's our own fault, really. So when the ball comes through here, as soon as we win that ball back, the wide centre-backs, Pavard and Acherby, they set off because they're on attack. So they kind of just leave everyone in. Do you see that? If I just backtrack that a little bit. So we win the ball. Martin, he's got it. He's watching his man. But when we win it back, as I slow this down, you'll see that he immediately sets off because he's on attack. So we've won it back there. Now we start setting off. He thinks we're in control. He's off, but we've lost it again. He's out of position. And then Loftus cheeks in. And that's how we concede. The attacking mentality of the defenders just means as soon as we've got the ball, we're off. Syria out! So I was intrigued about average positions. And wait till you see this. With the ball in a game we dominate, there you go. Look how many players go forward. So you've got your yeah, two strikers but the central midfielders are so close to them because they're switching places and it's so wide. You've got your two wing backs and your wide centre backs wide, leaving this guy to kind of hold down the fort. Now, without the ball, they do get back and drop in quite well, but your wing backs are still pretty advanced, leaving an overall position looking something like that. In the Champions League, it went all the way to penalties, but unfortunately, we blew it with some stinking penalties. And the guy that scored that late goal in the first leg, Gakpo, sealed it. A bloody good effort, though, against Liverpool. And in the league, despite a really good second half of the season, we just fell short to Napoli by three points. But we were the top scorers in the league and the best defence in the league. We really should have won that league. So that was actually quite pain-free. And I actually enjoyed that, believe it or not, for the first time ever. So there is a lot there that you can take to create a potential really good tactic, I think. Now, I did use three versions. That's the one I used second half of the season. That one is what I used against Liverpool away just to try and get something because I'm worried about that that match little changes here and there and that's the one we started the season with all in all this is probably the best version give us the most success the analyst report is really impressive you can see we used that formation throughout and clear cut chances four was plus 52 so we were always on top of teams and interestingly the goals were spread out if we put it in goals order you can see Lautaro Martinez who takes the penalties finished top scorer Taram only scored 13 and then you've got your midfielders with 13 10 and 9 even the center backs getting involved with 9 5 and 5 and as far as assists go as you can imagine you've got Hakan who takes the set pieces but then you've got wing backs Dumfries, Di Marco, Damian and the midfielders. I will stick that tactic in Patreon if you want to give it a go and try and make it even better for yourself. There's stuff you can do to make it more reasonable obviously you could change one of these to a normal striker role you could change one of these to back off a bit but interesting what we can do. So, 83% of 581 asked, fancied a tactic with as many people as possible holding position. So, a little while ago when we did everybody roaming, this is going to be the absolute opposite. So, the challenge accepted. Build a tactic with as many players holding their position as possible. Beautiful roaming, ticker, tacker, fluid football. Not the day. Hold position Barcelona is a go. The easy part of this tactic build will be the team instructions. We can kind of do what we want. The players and the player roles and the player instructions, that's what we've got to keep a focus on. Some really popular roles such as Mazala are out the window because they've got hard-coded run from position. But all is not lost because roles like advanced playmaker, you can actually tell them to hold their position. So potentially I'm not as scared about this as I thought I was going to be. So I chose Barca to do the exact opposite for what they're known for. So all the players won't have a license to roam around. We're going to make them pretty much stick to their positions. We'll start from the back. So full back positions, automatic, they are super fluid. Obviously, they can do whatever you want. If we go to wing back, you'll notice when we go to support or attack that we can't tell them to hold their position because it's such an aggressive role. However, if we do want attacking from the full backs, if we drop this to defend, it will naturally hold position. So I think that's what we'll go for. In defense, if you choose a defend duty, they will naturally hold their position as part of their hard coding. So we'll just go for the standard ball playing defenders. So that's my back four sorted. Midfield, if we're going to take a defensive midfielder in there, we have a few options. Deep line playmaker naturally holds, so does anchor, half back. The other ones like Regista and Roman playmaker and Segunda, they're out the window. If you want an all round role though, where we can kind of manipulate, we'll go for a defensive midfielder on support. We'll add in hold position, but I've chose defensive midfielder because it's a bit of a blank template and we can possibly move some of these into it as well. In midfield, we talked about Mazala being a no go, obviously, Roman playmaker, duh. But the others, pretty fair game other than box-to-box -box midfielder. But I'm going to go with central midfielder on support. I'm going to add in a few PIs as well to help me along the way. 
but obviously first up is hold position. Out wide, wingers and inverted wingers does allow you to drop in hold position. If you drop it up to attack, it doesn't. So we'll have both on support and holding position, either inverted or normal winger. My thinking is then, if they're going to hold their position, we need someone near them. So let's drop an attacking midfielder in there. We can't have him on attack though. So again, he's going to support duty with hold position. And the final one is the striker. Now, not many of these are going to let us do stuff. So false nine, Trequatista has already got Rome from position, as has complete forward. Some of the others will let us do it though. I've plumped for pressing forward on support. He'll be my striker holding his position. So I've got my base team down. Every position there holds their position naturally or with the added hold position. There's going to be no movement. We're just going to have to rely on basically player skill and a few team instructions to help us on our way. So we're going through preseason, and to my surprise, we absolutely battered Bayern Munich. So looking at the match, obviously we have runners. They're not just going to stand still. It just means that they're not going to roam around and leave their positions. You can see there we've got our winger either side, so they're nice and wide. That's our central midfielder support. That's our attacking midfielder. And you can see back here, there's the left wing back, right wing back. They're not bombing forward like you'd expect normal wing backs to do because they're happy to sit deep as the ball plays on. They're still pretty deep. Everyone's kind of in their positions. Xavi's getting forward. It's looking good. And as the third is about to go in, everyone's still in their designated zone. Look, you've got your wide players, 2 and 10. That's where they should be, 7 and 3. Everyone who's due in the midfield is in the midfield, and your two centre-backs. So we're nearing the end of a pretty successful pre-season. Barcelona! To finalise the tactic we're going for, we've added a couple of player instructions here and there. I'm asking Cross more often for my wing-backs to try and find some goals from somewhere. Asking my defenders to dribble more, but they are still holding that position. Central midfielder will take more risks, dribble more and hold so kind of fighting against each other there there's all the play instructions for the winger same on the other side your advanced midfielder just holding his position same gig with your striker team instructions down there pretty basic stuff with a balanced mentality now what will be tricky here is obviously barcelona have high expectations of a title challenge so if we absolutely bomb we might find ourselves out of a job here so I was naturally a bit worried when we lost away to Sociedad early. And not only that, look at the state of the match. Granted, they didn't have many shots, but we were pretty toothless. But maybe that was just us getting used to it because we did start to look a little bit better and we beat Atletico Madrid. Atletico Madrid. And again here against Sevilla, if I pause it there, you can see everyone in their designated zones. The wide guys wide. There we go. They're not roaming from their positions and all central midfielders. Those three, you can throw a blanket over them. In the first El Clasico, Real Madrid got the better of us. That was 3-1. But at the halfway point of the season, it was still going pretty well. We sat second in the league with just two defeats. We're only three points behind Madrid. And interestingly, we've only conceded nine goals. We're not scoring many for a Barcelona team, but only conceding nine is fantastic. And we've made it through in the Champions League, but unfortunately for us, we've drew Liverpool already. Let me take you to this impressive win against Hetafe. So normally when we look at average positions, it kind of roams about a bit. Not today. There's the average positions with the ball. You can see that's exactly how we set them up. Without the ball, back into shape. For an overall position of that, that's pretty much exactly how we have them set out. More good news here as the Super Cup final, so the lesser of the Cups, we beat Real Madrid in it. Pretty comfy as well, 3-0. It's not the worst tactic I've used in the world, this. It's pretty boring, but it's getting the job done. Rare. Madrid. We also beat Madrid in the league as well to get revenge. And how about that game against Liverpool in the Champions League? They scored from a set piece, but teams are having to work hard against us to score, and we managed to get an equaliser. First leg 1-1, probably should have got the win. And in the second leg, because we've got all these players on hold position, we're so hard to break down, and we nicked one at the end. We knocked Liverpool out. That's huge. I don't care if they had 10 men. That is still huge. That meant we got into in the quarters. We beat them at home and same score away to get to the semi-finals of the Champs League. And the team was starting to enjoy it. Chemistry was up. We are like prime 90s Arsenal here. It was another 1-0 win, this time in the Spanish Cup final. So that's two trophies down for the team. In the closing stages of the league campaign, we're just behind Real Madrid. It's our goal scoring that's let us down. We've only scored 62. They've scored nearly twice as many, but our defensive record is fantastic. We've had 22 clean sheets. Our problem has been chances created down in fifth. You wouldn't expect that from a Barcelona team. In the Champions League semis, another English team. This time it was Arsenal. 
And over the two legs, again, they couldn't break us down. They didn't score a goal. We scored three in the home leg and got through to the final. Teams are really struggling to break us down. Look at this. We've got the ball here and everyone is just kind of sat in their positions. Watch them all. There's no roaming around here. They are sticking to their designated slots, getting the ball, passing it. But they're not passing moving as such. They're just passing and holding, passing and holding. It is doing exactly what we wanted it to do. And in defence, it's so hard to break down. For example, look what happens here when they try and counter-attack. Jesus gets it. He's got no one to hit because we're all getting back into our positions. And he ends up just smashing it upfield. It's actually mad how dormant they are when they haven't got the ball. They just stick to their positions. Look at them. Valdez got it. All these guys up front. There's hardly any movement. You've really got to rely on having some good quality players to get you some goals at least because it's so solid. But nobody's moving. They're just sticking, sticking. So the league campaign was over. A couple of late draws meant that Real Madrid did coast the title, but we did have the best defence in the league. It would be really interesting to see what you could do using parts of this philosophy of whole position and then parts of your own more attacking stuff. So merging the two, you could get a really successful tactic. Having said all of that, we had made the Champions League final and wouldn't you believe it, it's against my massive bogey team, Aston Villa. What are they doing there? So up against Unai Emery, we got the first chance with a penalty on 22 minutes. Lewandowski put it away and we led all the way to the 92nd minute when Aston Blooming Villa equalised through Nonto and then in extra time from a corner Oli Watkins scored. Are you kidding? Ah oh, shit, here we go again. Honestly, Villa and me have a bigger rivalry than Drew McIntyre and CM Punk. I hate them. We nearly got the Champions League which would have meant three cups and a second place which is way better than I thought we were going to do. So back to that tactic, like I said before, you can use elements of that with some more expressive stuff higher up. You could build an absolute beast of a tactic. So there we have it. Whole position, in match, they stick to their designated zones big time. Okay, so tactical style. Team instructions. Player instructions. Today we take them all out and only rely on player traits. Bro, what are you talking about, man? Right, start club is Inter, but it really doesn't matter massively what team we start with, as you'll see shortly. So some say there is a hierarchy in terms of tactics where play instructions trump team instructions, but traits trump both of them. Now, quite honestly, I have no idea, but we're going to lean into the player traits being the most powerful because that's all we're going to use today, just player traits. So we're going to build a tactic and a squad based on player traits, and that's all that's going to go in. All that's going to go in is player traits and the player roles. Failure is your destiny. Now, to do this, I'll load a successful tactic in. Stingsley Flick, one of the best tactics I've used this year. But look at all the team instructions. They're going to come off. And if we click on a random player, you can see all the added player instructions we've put onto him. And we're going to take all of them out when the season starts, including all the team instructions. A pure blank canvas. The next thing is to find some players using player traits that will suit that setup. So it's up to the player search engine. You'll notice we've got in-game editor turned on. That's so we can just move the players across nice and easy. That's all we'll use it for. We're going to start looking for a right wing back. Now, what we want from this is some key traits. Not many, just a couple. Now, as you can see, we're searching by player traits. So I want my wing back to be the main source down the right-hand side. So the first one I'm going to look for is gets forward whenever possible. That means he'll bomb down there as much as possible. And as you can see, loads have showed up, but we want something else. Once we've balled down right, now we can see the players we've got lined up. So Fringpong looks ideal. Player traits have runs with ball down right, gets forward, and a little bonus one of runs with ball often. We'll move him to Inter. He's going to be the right back. We'll do the same for the left wing back. Jose Gaia, perfect. So I've got my two fullbacks in, sticking to their side of the pitch and running wide. So that's going to be the main wide outlet for the team. Now the centre backs, I want them to play a bit of ball here. So being comfortable on the ball will be key. But I also don't want them jumping into tackles recklessly. I can see what they're doing. Now, luckily, by choosing Inter, we've got the perfect centre-back in Bastoni. He's got does not dive into tackles. He's got tries long-range passes. And he's got brings ball out of defence, which is good because we can add dribble more. He's got that trait, so that's going to encourage it anyway. The second centre-back, I want to be a bit more expressive. So we've got a libero. So for a libero, we'll need a certain bunch of traits for that. So first off, brings ball out of defence is an absolute essential. The next one, to find ourselves an aggressive centre-back, let's slot in runs with ball often. We've immediately got a few options now. 
So if I add a third trait in there to make it the most aggressive centre back possible, believe it or not, add by adding in gets into opposition area, that's going to encourage Libero to be what we want him to be and get that little bit further forward. And Arthur Fete is absolutely perfect for it. I can see it, I feel it. So he's slots in at Libero. That last trait wasn't really essential, but I was getting a bit greedy. I just think it'll encourage him to get a little bit further up and not hold back that much. Next, we're moving to midfield, DLP and Valante. Again, we've got Hakan already at the club, who's the perfect DLP. He's got the Dick Takes Tempo, which is a one-on-one, -on -one, and tries long-range passes. Those are the two I want. My Valante will be Barella already at enter, and the key player traits for this one is because we wanted to get up and support that attack, will be get forward whenever possible, and moves into channels. So what we're looking from the Valante is to obviously get further forward, get into the box, supply some goals, and move into channels as well, backing up the wing backs because these two wide positions are going to be a bit different. As we move into the wide positions, I've got two slightly different roles for it, so they're not going to be the same traits. One of them is, so we're going to have cuts inside from that wing, so it's going to cut inside. The second one will be the difference maker. So on this side, I want to be a bit more of a creator, so I'm going to go with tries killer balls often. So Sousa will be ideal, he's going to try those killer balls and he cuts inside from the right wing allowing space for our wing back to go around. Now on the flip side, as we change this one to attack and midfield the left and cut inside from left wing, what we're going to change is we're going to take off tries killer balls more often because I want this player to be a bit more selfish. And we're going to add in shoots from distance. This is where players come up that you might not have heard of. And this is Mislav Orsic. As you can see, he's going to be perfect on that side and he's got long shots to die for with 18. So we've got shoots from distance and he's also going to cut inside from the left wing and a bonus ball of tries first time shots. Now the team's starting to take shape. We've got the wing backs who will overlap the advanced playmaker who will then tuck in. Valante will support both. And on the other side, same gig, Gaia will get forward and we'll watch for this inside forward coming inside and pinging in some shots. Next up will be a key position, the advanced midfield role. I really just want this guy to play killer balls, really. So that will be the trait that I mostly look for for this guy. He's going to be the main key point, the key focal point higher up the pitch. We're going to go with Dybala. He's perfect for it. Tries killer balls and the bonus ball that plays one twos and comes deep to get the ball. So those three traits should work quite well in that position. Likes to try and beat the offside trap. And we'll add in moves into channels as well, just to benefit the player role. Chiro Immobile comes up, he's 34 now, but he's the one we're going to use, moves into the channel, and there's that likes to try to beat the offside trap. He's also got places shot, so he'll be nice and composed when he gets a chance. And by the way, the only one we're going to look for from the goalkeeper is to start our counter-attacks, and I quite like the thought of them using long throws to set us off. So we're going to take David Raya because we want him to be a sweeper keeper using the long force to start counter attack and he's got the bonus of tries to play his way out of trouble so he'll look to pass or dribble rather than just hoof it. So that is my traits 11. They're all going to rely on their personal traits and I'm going to do nothing else. I'm, I'm not happy with it. I'm, I don't think it's good at all. However, for pre-season, for the first four or five pre-seasons, I'm going to keep the team instructions locked in so you can see what this team would be capable of with team instructions. Let's have a look. Stop it. Have you subscribed yet? If you've been enjoying the videos recently, please do consider dropping a sub. We're trying to get to 17,500 by the time of FM25's launch. So as expected, they were fantastic in pre-season because they've got them team instructions and a really strong tactic behind them. You'll also see down the side here, I brought in subs for these guys as well. So we've got a full squad of traits. For example, Hakan's backup will be Bruno Gamares, tries killer balls, dictates tempo, tries long range passes. Perfect. And the backup for Immobile will be Ollie Watkins, where he's moving the channels and tries to beat the offside trap. We've done that throughout the squad. But as you can see, we've now got it lined up to progress from here with a clean slate. So no team instructions at all. None in possession, none in transition. And when we get to out of possession, it just sets you up at a mid block. We're not going to touch it. The one thing I have touched is mentality. The first run of this, we're going to go attacking mentality to see if that helps them out at all. We'll also knock these two wing backs to automatic. There we go, so they're going to react to the team mentality. Let's see how they do. So the first game we used, it was the friendly against Juventus. As we can see, the Libero is getting himself forward like he would. The wing backs are nice and forward and sticking wide as we play this on. The ball goes into Dybala and we're looking for him to supply those killer passes. Exactly what he does. And it got better as Fringpong sticks to that wide touchline like we thought he would with his traits. He pulls it back for the Volante, who's supporting into the channels. Does exactly what he says on the tin so far. Plays inside to Hakan, who finds the killer ball to Dabala, who yet again produces that pass. A massively impressive 6-1 win against Juve, and look at the match stats. 
Now, the first league game of the season was against Napoli, and Orsic with that shoots from distance. A 1-1 draw, but a positive performance. First defeat came in the next match against Roma. Pretty toothless in that one. Overall, by January, it was pretty solid stuff. I sat fourth in the league, probably drawing a few too many matches. What I did notice, though, if you look at the player average ratings, they're pretty average. No real standouts going on here. But the link-up is absolutely fine. There were some big standout games like this one against Atlante. You can see Suso drifting in from that right wing with his player trait. Finding Dybala, there's that killer ball. And Immobile with the beat the offside trap. And the team also surprised me by winning the Italian Cup. They actually won something with no directions. And qualify for the Champions League, finishing third, only losing the six matches. They just drew too many. So what this shows me is that you can proper scale back your tactic and get some success. That's got no, no instructions anywhere other than the hard-coded ones and the player traits and the finished third with only six defeats. So that is the ultimate blank template. We use the attacking mentality. I think for the next go round, I'll just drop this down to balance. Balance next time. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. At the midpoint of the season in balance, they were arguably playing a little bit better. They sat second in the league, only a point behind AC Milan. And it looked like they were scoring a bit more. That's two per game. And again, team chemistry was absolutely fine. I'll pick out this dominating display against Lazio and have a little look at it. There's a libero getting himself forward. And here comes Avante also storming forward. Really impressive 3-0 win. And as we look at the average positions, that's the positions with the ball. So you can see the libero is a little bit ahead of his centre-back partner. And you've got your wing-backs getting up nice and high thanks to their player traits. The front four. Sitting in tight is Suso with that cut in. Same with Orsic. Without the ball, they drop into a lovely shape. Look at that. Football heritage. In the second half of the season, they tailed off a little bit. Ended up finishing fourth in the league, so I still qualified for the Champs League, but no trophy this time. But again, chemistry was there. It looks like we're just lacking a bit of attacking thrust, thanks to the mentality. I'll tell you, it does show what you can do if you want to focus on trades, because all these guys have got the perfect traits for their positions, and they've done pretty well. It just needs a little bit of direction and instructions here and there, and you could probably kill it. I think it does give fuel to the fire that player traits are the most powerful thing when it comes to building your tactic, and I, for one, kind of disregard them when I'm building tactics, and maybe this is going to make me rethink everything a little bit. I guess the other thing to think about is how big a role do the roles actually play, so the deep-line playmaker role has those hard-coded instructions of take more risks, hold position, do they factor in big time as well? It's one of those videos where we've again got more questions than answers, but at least we've got some answers, kind of. Today it's a new type of challenge because we welcome back our old friend. The wheel is back and he's got some surprises in for us this time. It's going to dictate to us how many outfield player roles we're allowed to use, what roles we're going to use, then we attempt to make the best tactic possible. Football. That's right folks, the wheel is back. The wheel of doom some would say. And today we have to decide how many outfield roles we will use in our tactic. Spinning, 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 spinning. Is it going to be eight? It's going to be four. Only four. So we're going to need defenders. So let's start off with what type of centre back we're going to do. I'm thinking with only four roles, we're going to go three at the back. But let's see. We've got ball playing defender, libero, wide centre back, no nonsense centre back, or just a standard centre back. You just knew it, didn't you? You just knew it. I mean, luckily, we have experience with the old libero. Fullbacks, we will get to use, it looks like, wingbacks. So that's two rolls down. I've got liberos with wingbacks. So I've got, only got two more rolls left, so I'm going to have to do midfield and strike him. That's it. Bog standard central midfield. So now it's time for the last roll, and that will be one of the striker rolls. So it's either going to be two or three of these in the team. What a cocktail this is. CF is complete forward. Liberos, wing backs, bog standard central midfielders, and complete forwards. Let's go over to Turkey and Besiktas for this one. So we now know the roles we're allowed to use. Libero, wing back, central midfielder, blank canvas, and complete forward. Those are the four. I guess we have two options here. We can either go double libero in a back four like this, and have wing backs on the outside. 
and then maybe three central midfielders and three strikers like a 4-3-3 three, three. so something like that is one option i'd just worry a bit obviously that the defensive area is going to be a bit exposed because these guys are going to move up to there most of the time and they're going to be bombing on anywhere so who drops back even if i put him on defend he isn't going to drop back far enough <laughs> Another option is a back five where we could either lose a midfielder or maybe a striker like that and have three liberos. Or the other option is to go three up top like that, push these guys forward a bit for a goal threat. Ah, let's have a look. Tried the back four in the preseason friendlies. It wasn't really working. We we're a bit all over the place. We look good going forward, largely due to the wing backs and the central midfielders. But going the other way, there was too many gaps. The liberos were getting caught out. No cover. Reefing. So I changed to a back three in this game against Lille and it just clicked. Yes, we conceded a couple of goals, but that is always going to happen with the liberos. But going forward, we look super slick and the complete forwards combining beautifully with the central midfielders. We stomped a six goal win against a really good French team and you can see the layout we've got there. This will probably be our final tactic. Let's take a look. Let's go. So we are into October now. Things have gone okay. We'll get to that shortly. But this is what we've gone with. We've gone with triple the bear rows. I've gone ballsy as you like. One holding, two support, two central midfielders on attack, two wing backs on attack, and then the complete forward front line, two on attack, one on support. We've embraced the carnage. Let's just go for it. We've got attacking team mentalities down here with a balanced overall mentality. I'm using the Stinger Zio tactical style. That's a new tactic video that's going up on the second channel. It started all right, you know, it started all right. First of all, the negatives. We did get knocked out of the Conference League by Dynamo Kiev. We got a bit of a battering away from home. In the return game, we battered them, but just couldn't score enough goals. So we went out 3-5. But now the positives. When we get the ball, we are a nuts attacking threat. So we've got the two liberos there. The three of them, sorry, combining. You can see how high up my wing backs are. Look at the front lot. So we've got... Three complete forwards and two central midfielders on attack, completely overloading. So if we can get the wing backs free, it means they've got so many players to aim at. This is the wide complete forward, feeding it to the central midfielder on attack. Here's one of my wing backs. Patience, options everywhere. You will notice, however, that we have absolutely nobody back. So this season's going to be a bit of a thrill ride. Back to this match, he finds a left wing back. He's got all sorts to aim for. Lovely. The movement from the complete forwards and central midfielders continue to cause havoc. There's the big problem. That ball over the top will always be an issue. But my thinking is, if we can outscore the opposition this year, we will win more matches than we lose. So that was a 6-2 league win. And the start to the season had been pretty good. The only loss was away to Fenerbahce. But if you consider they're probably the best team in Turkey, we only lost 3-2 away from home playing that formation. So this is what we're going for for the season. We're just going to attack and attack and attack and see what happens. The three complete forwards, them three will probably stay the same. I like Rafa because he's more of an attacking midfielder. So he will naturally drop back a bit, hopefully. Everywhere else will probably rotate a bit. I'll stick it in Patreon so you can give it a go. Let's get up to Christmas and see what happens. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. As expected, it was a bit of a thrill ride, but it's always good when you play one of your big rivals like Galatasaray and absolutely batter them. So they had absolutely no idea how to handle us. And if you look at this now, how many players do we have in the box? We beat our big rivals 5-1. And then we won the Turkish Super Cup by putting another five past them. So on New Year's Eve, things were going well. We'd lost a couple of matches. And although we sat down in sixth, we are still in it. There's only six points from six to the top. And as expected, we've scored a ton of goals. 52 in the 18 matches. We've conceded 24, but if we continue to score this many, we might be all right here. I've never heard so much rubbish in my life. So average positions with this tactic should be pretty interesting. With the ball, it looks pretty standard. It doesn't take into account the late bursts by the liberos. Without the ball, again, back in shape, not a problem there. For an overall shape of that, I think that's actually quite deceiving when you watch it in the match. Take this match, for example, if I pause it there, that's one of my complete forwards. My wing back is now the most advanced player on the pitch. Here we've got one of the central midfielders breaking forward as well. So you can see the movement. And don't even start me on the two liberos, the support ones getting forward. So you can see the average positions that it gave you is pretty false because we've got everybody, literally everybody, in the opposition half. 
Right, we're in March now. Things have gone disgustingly well. The three strikers are loving life and the chemistry from the team is getting there near perfection. Rebic has done great with 20 goals, 17 and 20 four in the league, playing as the wider complete forward. Rafa, like we thought, dropping into a more of an assist role with 14 as the drop-off complete forward. And we've got Big Vincent here as well, doing his bit, 10 goals, six assists. Things are going well. It also helps we've got over 15 goals combined from our liberos. Disappointingly, we got knocked out of the Turkish Cup. We probably should have done better as well. But other than that, so far, we've absolutely nailed the second half of the season. And quite shockingly, we have shot up to top of the league. This league is so tight, but a good run has seen us go top. In 30 matches, we've now scored 86 times. We're nearly at three a match, and we're not leaking as many goals as I thought we would. I thought I'd be more likely to get sacked, but we're gunning for the title here. Now, we've got about eight or nine matches left, and the big one stands out like a sore thumb. It's Galatasaray away. We beat them 5-1 at home. They're second in the league at the minute, but they've got a game in hand, so they're probably going to go top. So it's all going to be on that Galatasaray match. And leading up to that Galatasaray match, we continue to win. In fact, I think we won every match. That's the Libero getting forwards to play in the complete forward. And there you see it. We have been on a fantastic run. It means going into this Galatasaray match, we have three matches to go. We've got two clear. We beat Galatasaray. We are unbelievably going to win this league. Are you ready? So remember, we beat these lot 5-1 at our place. I think they remembered it because they just opened up against us. They just killed us on the counter-attack. Look at the gaps they've got. They're exploiting the liberos. And in the title decider, we decided to leave Akadi with all the room in the world. Tactic exposed. Galatasaray thump us 5-1. We end up missing out on the league by four points despite only losing five matches all season. We smashed in an incredible 115 goals. We did concede 52 for a goal difference of 63. For a little period there, I thought we were going to pull it off with four player roles. I thought we were going to get that league title. What a fun tactic to watch though. Fun, but on the way back, counter-attacking, it's scary because these three just do not care about staying in their own half. We have got a much higher defensive line. To make this a bit more solid, you could obviously drop this back to lower standard, whatever. But I was just thinking, let's go all out attack. And it nearly worked for us. It nearly worked for us. And if you look at the analyst report, you can see we created 56 more chances than our opposition. And the formations we faced, none of them really got the better of us, other than a 5-2-3 wide, but that was only in two matches. The most popular tactics you'll come up against, your 4-2-3-1s, it murdered them. Even a 4-4-2, quite surprisingly, and a 4-3-3. So the big three, it murdered them. There's obviously easy ways you can fix this tactic, such as the defensive line, or even scaling back a couple of barrows to normal defenders. But if you want a new version of an attacking tactic, that is a surprising beauty. So I did stick some player instructions on there to try and help us out a bit. I'll put them on the end of the video if you're not a member of the Patreon. Oh, it was close. Okay, without doubt, this is the most disgusting tactic challenge I've ever done. And that's saying a lot. I can't remember who asked me to do this, but I'm about to create a tactic that somehow resembles the number two. Jesus Christ, you're oh. joking. Right, so first go at it. I mean, how does that look? Probably not. We'll try again. It's not as easy as you think this. Um, uh, no, absolutely not. I think we've landed on it. That looks too... Two-ish? We'll play that for a couple of games. So we played that in pre-season. It wasn't as big a disaster as you might think, you know. Liverpool and Benfica got four against us, but we were competitive. We actually scored twice against Liverpool. I'm well impressed. And there you can see the tactic. But something's eating away at me a bit. Viewers, you've no idea how much I appreciate your comments and then interacting with you in the videos and that you enjoy them. But I know a few of you are going to say to me, that's not a two. And the annoying thing is, you're probably right. It's an easy fix, though. We just need to slide this ombre to there. That is a two. You son of a bitch. So as we get for this La Liga campaign with the twos tactic, it's a question of how long will we last. So that's where we're set up. As the season goes, we'll see how it looks and we'll try adding some player instructions to try and cover this gaping, gaping gap. 
Right, hold on to your hats. It's the first game of the season against Hatafe. And it went rather well, and we banged in four. Look, we're going to have harder opposition, but that's not a bad start for the two. We then lost a tight match against Betis. Then it was time for the first big test in Atletico Madrid. I'm not worried, you are. Because Diego Simeone must have been raging because he had absolutely no idea what to do against us here. <laughs> One of the best teams in Spanish football could not deal with the two tactic. Oh my days, that is massive. And the whole team, pretty much the whole team, was fantastic. Now you must be wondering about average positions. Well, this might surprise you. With the ball, thanks to those player roles and what have you, it breaks into like a 4-2-4 kind of thing. That guy over there is playing as a wide centre-back on attack. Pretty much a narrow fullback. That's kind of working. Without the ball, the drop back in. That's when it looks a bit messy. Overall shape? I can live with it, I can live with it. The first team to really expose us was Man City. No big surprise there. That led to a bit of a dodgy run. I was starting to get a little bit worried, I won't lie. So then I added a couple of player instructions to try and help us out. I asked my wide centre-back on attack to mark specific position. That will be the opposition winger. So hopefully he stays out there a bit more. I also asked the widest of the strikers to do a similar thing, asking him to mark the fullback. I also changed him to a pressing forward as well, just so he does a bit more work. This led to our best performance of the season as we absolutely murdered Sevilla. A lot of the players coming down the right-hand side, as you might expect. But look at the movement. There's loads of players over there. We've got massive overloads. A landmark 4-0 win. But then it was time for Real Madrid. And after we went behind quite early, we obviously feared the worst. But despite being under the cosh for most of the match, my boys down that right-hand side again found a way through. And we sealed a 1-1 draw. Followed by a six-goal thumping of Alaves with every player shining. And at the midway point of the season, we're currently on our best run. Those little tweaks have made all the difference. That little tweak there means he kind of stays out there a little bit more. And these guys shuffle across. He's doing a bit more work now. We're not doing bad. At the halfway point of the season, we're sitting in eighth position. But Champions League's only four points off us. So the board were getting a bit itchy around November, the dreaded November time. But we have survived... We've gone out of the Champions League, a proper pretty good effort considering the state of the group, City and Dortmund. We've got Europa League, unfortunately, Liverpool, I'm not looking forward to that. But fingers crossed, let's see how long we can survive. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Barca next. Into the Barca match we went, and we only took the lead. 2-0, by the way, at half-time. What? Now, they got one back, but it was all our fault, look. Wide centre-back got himself a little bit confused and Lewandowski capitalised. But we dominated this match and we go down that right-hand side again and Odiozola from right back smashes it in. Result of the season. So we're on good form and play instructions have been vital. For example, we've added another defensive midfielder. Mark specific position. Midfield, centre, right. So when this guy gets the ball in the opposition, he kind of goes over there a little bit more, helping cover this area. So we've got him, centre-back, and the wide forward covering this area. I'll take you to this Girona game where we won 2-0. You can see the centre-backs there. Lenormand is our wide centre-back. Odiozola with the ball. Plays it forward. Now, we've got options here. There's our three strikers. He's the widest of the strikers. This is our player just playing in that pocket like a fake winger that I like to use at the minute. And what you'll see is we overload this right-hand side. Look at that. We've got one, two, three, four, five of them. They're at the peak of the two, if you like. So there's five of them over here, up against four. So we've always got a man advantage, leaving the wing back to be free on this occasion. Plenty in the box. Two centre-backs are just normal, so they're sticking back. As mad as the two tactic looks, it's actually not as stupid in match as you might think. What? Yeah, believe it or not, we have made worse tactics than this. F*** off! So into the new year, we started off really well. We got knocked out of Europa League by Liverpool as expected, but other than that, results have been pretty good. Four games to go, we sit shockingly in fifth. We're one point off the Champions League. Somehow Cadiz have got that spot at the minute. If we can get Champs League, wow. We're going into one game left, but look at the team chemistry we've somehow managed to create. The front four, if you like, absolutely loving life. Even these guys have linked up in a really weird way. 
So into the last game, we're level on points with Cadiz. We need to do better than them. Our problem is our last game is away at Barcelona. We did just get a free free draw against Real Madrid. We did pretty well in that one, but you couldn't ask for a harder game at the end of the season. So final game of the season, Barcelona, and they took the lead on 48 minutes. However, 72 minutes, we went down the opposite flank this time, down the left, bang that in at any time, and a away draw against Barcelona is fantastic. But it meant so much more this time as we qualified for the Champs League after Cadiz blew it. Who'd have thunked it? The two tactic gets Real Sociedad into the Champions League. Just, but we got there. It's at this point I usually say I'll put this tactic in Patreon for those who want to try it, but who the hell wants to try that? But it won more games than it lost, so it is a successful tactic. It had plus nine clear-cut chances created. You'll see the other version we used for just pre-season and that one game at the start with only a minus one. So the change to the actual two worked very well. 4-3-3 got the better of it. 4-2-3-1 didn't like it and 4-4-2 was lost against it. So once again, we push the boundaries of what you can do in Football Manager. And this time, I'm putting the blame squarely on you lot. Look, you know and I know that the most popular style of playing Football Manager is ultra high press, gag and press. That's the end of that one then, isn't it? <laughs> so today, instead of fighting that, we're gonna lean right into it and make the most intense pressing tactic of all time. <laughs> That's what we want. What's up, everyone? Welcome to Barcelona. Now, disclaimer, we're not going to finish with Barcelona. I've made two versions of this, and this is the first one we did with Barca. But I prefer the other one, but I'll show you this one first. You might have noticed we beat Vallecano 10-0 with this tactic. And there was also an eight-goal away win at Celta Vigo. And to be fair, it did well against Real Madrid as well. Look how much we're pinning them back. They can't get out. 3-0 in that one. But alas, they didn't win the league. They finished second, only losing four matches. One was against Madrid, but overall, it was bloody good. And they scored 100 times, conceding 31. It was just an elite Real Madrid team that stopped them winning the league. And this is what we did. This is the one I've called press till you drop. Every position is basically going for it. Even the two central defenders are on stopper. So when I was putting it together, I just wanted the most aggressive pressing player roles I could possibly think of and it all goes with the player instructions now in possession in transition they all come into play but mostly it's all about out of possession you'll have seen every tactic under the sun that you can download with this sort of setup much higher defensive line high press much more often get stuck in it's kind of that horrible meta word for this year's fm wow however to emphasize that even more we have to get the player roles on max pressing as well so obviously two pressing forwards to put pressure on the back line Defensive wingers to put pressure on the fullbacks, two ball winning midfielders to put pressure on absolutely everybody, and the one I've never done before, and it worked quite well surprisingly, was two centre backs on stopper duty. So admit it, how many of you use stopper duty? No, no. And if you do, how many of you used two? What it basically means is your defender jumps forward to try and stop attackers coming at you. So we've both got them jumping forward, which will probably leave a gap in behind. So in fact, if they miss the ball, they end up there. And that's why we've got a sweeper keeper on attack to attempt to clean up their mess. So overall, it worked really well. Opposition passes per defensive action. We're top of that, so we're stopping teams playing. The super high defensive line. We even created the most chances in the league, more than Real Madrid. This is the impressive one. Possession one. Top of that by an absolute mile. High intensity sprints. I won't lie, I probably expected us to be a bit higher than that. Crosses, so that's the type of play with the defensive wingers. Fouls, disappointed to be under Hatafe, but it was probably Mason Greenwood fouling everybody. And final third passes against per match, we conceded the less because we're pressing teams really high up. So a good season overall, but not fantastic. There was a couple of defeats in there, mostly in the Champions League. But it's good overall, and I'll stick that in Patreon. You can obviously improve it by just calming one of these boys down to maybe a normal central defender, one or maybe two, and then changing a player role or two. But if you want intense football, there's a 4-4-2 for you. Next up, I went to Juventus to try the second version, and this one I kind of like a bit more because it's a little bit more balmy. So I was trying again, and there's a few player roles I definitely wanted. I definitely wanted pressing forwards up front. All of them will be pressing forwards in one form or another. I definitely wanted a ball win midfielder because they just seem to get everywhere. And I 100% wanted Omega Luke's new favourite player role, defensive wingers, because they just push them fullbacks right back. So if we're trying to gig and press, that's the perfect one because they're going to be on the fullbacks 
like a rash. So those rolls were definitely going to be part of this, but I didn't want to do a 442. We've just done that. We know that kind of works, so we'll try something a bit different for Juve. In the friendlies, it was safe to say I was having a bit of trouble getting it working, and AC Milan murdered us 5-1. However, when we went back into the lab, we started to get things ticking. In our first league game in Serie A, we beat Inter Milan, no less. This is super impressive, and especially considering we're playing away from home. Then we played AC Milan in the league, not the friendly, the league, and it was a complete different story. So nearly overnight we've gone from getting battered 5-1 to dropping 1-1. Now what comes with a high tempo, high press approach is fast, fast football. Look at this. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> now if you're pressing high, there is a chance if you don't win it back, you're going to leave all sorts of gaps, as you can see here. But if you get it right, you're going to spend most of your time in the opposition half. So with version 2, the early signs were good. Just one defeat and we'd had wins against Inter and Arsenal. And we got locked in the set out of possession instructions. Much higher defensive line, high press, max trigger press, prevent distribution, get stuck in, step up more, everything. The gaps are there, but if we win it back up here, it's not a problem. Up front, we had three pressing forwards, one on attack and two either side of him on support. This meant the opposition defence had no time to breathe at all. Quite often, that happened. So in midfield, we had three. We had our two defensive wingers that are vital for this and one sole ball-winning midfielder who will just cover everywhere. Most of the time, it's been Juventus' new signing Douglas Luiz doing that job. As you can see here, when the ball's anywhere near him, he's going to swallow it up. Now, defensive wingers are great. They shouldn't be called that because they are actually really aggressive. Now, watch this. As this comes in, we've got our pressing forwards there, all three of them, all over the centre-backs. They have no time on the ball. They try and dally on it. We'll have that. When you press teams so much, they have no options. Now, he's getting pressed by the ball win midfielder and the defensive winger. And look, they've got no one to aim at. So they just end up hoofing it to absolutely nobody. And we score off this one. The defensive winger goes wide. He's got three pressing forwards pushing against the centre-backs. Pings it over. Result. Now, at the back, I was a bit torn on what to do, but I went with one stopper to jump in and one standard. Now, you'll notice I've got two inverted wingbacks on attack. Why is that? because they're going to spend most of their time up here. So when we're trying to press high, if we lose the ball, they're going to be in a better position to press straight away rather than being stuck back here. It makes for a pretty wild looking average position because everyone's pressing high with the ball. There you see it. Front to back, we've got a, like a box five in there. It's basically a five five. Without the ball, we drop into that. I mean, it's messy, isn't it? It's messy. For an overall shape of that, your number five, Douglas Louise on Locatelli in this case, they've got to be on it as the ball winning midfielder. It was a fun tactic. We finished second, so not amazing, but definitely had some perks. And similar to the Barca version, this one was top of all the key metrics. Crosses from your defensive wingers, high intensity sprints, top of that one. Crosses attempted, passes per defensive action, chances created, final third passes against. Even yellow cards were top of that. That is Geg and Press, full press in action in full flow. Top scorers in Serie A with 86, conceding 40, but there is some big gaps there. But it just shows what you can do between that 4-4-2 and this 4-3-3. There is the final version of it. Three strikers up front doing a lot of work. Then we've got the combo of the wingers and the inverted wingbacks and the loan shark in central midfield. Now, we were in the Champions League. In the knockouts, we drew Aston Villa. I know, I know. But check out this press here from the pressing forward. As Villa try and play out, Chiesa says not today. Takes it off Matty Cash. A cracking goal on the break. That gave us a bumping 6-2 win over Villa. It's been a long time coming that. A long time coming. In the second leg, Villa beat us 6-1 and knocked us out. Cue Ricky Gervais gift. Oh, for 